All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Word with Ty Brownlow. I am your host, Ty Brownlow. Remember, no one is worthless. No story is worthless. Today, ladies and gentlemen, you all know I pride myself on informational content. And today, today's show will be no different, okay? But let me throw some stats out here for, you know, people who may not, you know, know this or if you do, okay. But did you know 50% of all marriages in America will end in divorce, all right? It's not a surprise, you turn on the TV, you turn, you look at social media, what have you, it's all out there, okay? But here's something very interesting that I didn't know. 41% of first time marriages will end in divorce. That is staggering, okay? So joining me today, all the way from the East Coast, okay? Saddle River, New Jersey, all right? Please put your hands together for Dr. Frida Birnbaum. Hey, <laughs> thank you so much. Always a pleasure. You know, I've been in practice for 30 some years already. It goes very fast. I've heard, I've seen everything, but why wait till something's explosive in order to take care of it? Why not do it when the couple's really at a stage the romantic stage, but they can do no wrong. And then they really listen to each other. And when it does happen, they'll be more prepared to do it. I guess they call me the bartender of relationships because people come in and they just talk and they let me know about their infidelity. They let me know about stuff. I'm holding onto my chair, what they're talking about to each other that they never revealed before. So these things become so explosive and at a time when you want to hurt each other, you know, you're going to do a good job hurting each other, but you'll also hurt the marriage. And we should really stay in a marriage. That's what life is really about. People who are married actually are happier, believe it or not, and they live longer. So I'm even producing a show about this, uh, mm -hmm. the emotional prenup, how to prevent this from happening. What secrets do you have? And we'll talk about, I have a whole list of things that people aren't prepared for that eventually it does come up did you did we just get in the dark okay yeah so eventually you know these things uh do come up but we have to know that if you listen to the other person uh forget about your ego compromise and most of all what's effective it's not who's right or wrong you know sit down and talk to each other at the end of the day because when that romantic stage leaves the depth of relationship has much more to offer and you're much more connected uh, than before. So enjoy working on it. It's work, but it's really worth it. Mm. Well, you now you just said something very profound, Dr. Freedom, okay? Checking the ego, okay? Now, in these days and times, everyone wants to be right. Everyone wants to have the higher up on someone else. And sometimes this can be in marriages as well. Um, and, you know, just as a sidebar, I don't know if you heard, um, Michelle Obama, I believe, was on Gail King um, the other day, sometime this week or maybe last week. But she said something that everyone's talking about, you know, in certain circles or what have you. But they were talking about marriage. And Michelle Obama alluded to the point that she's been married 30 years. 10 of those years were not great. And people lost their, oh, oh my God, what? how can she say that? What, da, 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 you know, like, oh, I mean, yeah, comments were going through the board. But as I sat there and I thought about it for a second, you know, and I think about my own marriage, which, which is coming up on five years, you know, one thing that I've learned is marriage is about sacrifice on your end and on the other person's end as well you know and as you said to make the union more stronger yeah we're gonna have to work together it's not it can't be a big i and a little you mentality no we both have to work together it can't, that's impossible uh, you have to know that the other person is not your clone and the things that happened in their past has nothing to do with you. So we get very comfortable with each other and then we wanna hurt each other and we do an excellent job with that. But so many things come up, you know, even the way you fight. 
Are you somebody who gives the silent treatment? Or are you somebody who really goes and attacks? And usually it's the woman who does that. She remembers everything in the past. So you guys better watch out. It's going to come and get you. But when we talk about what kind of life do you want? Do you want to fix up the house or do you want to go on vacation? And what about money? Money is one of the biggest factors for divorce. Mm. How do you want to spend your money? Are you a saver or are you a spender? Are you somebody who will put that money in the bank? Or will you want to go and buy stuff with it every month, every week, every day? That's something that also creates a lot of rivalry, a lot of divorce. And one of the big factors I know about the in-laws. I've been married, believe it or not, 50 some years. So every other day, I think to myself, uh, is this gonna, you know, can I take this today? I'm out of here, this is it, I've had it. But then again, you know, the errands and the conveniences stay and then the, you forget why you wanted to leave to begin with. But things happen, you, you can't have it perfect. But the things that happen should not break the marriage. The things that happen should be a contract that you look at every year, every five years. Do I wanna make changes with that contract? Is what was important before not important? Or is it a deal breaker? Infidelity, can I put up with it? Can I work it through? Or do I really wanna just get out of here? Monogamy, can I really be in a relationship for the rest of my life that's monogamous? You know, that could be very scary to somebody to have to be able to just be faithful to some some one person. But then the other person could say, oh, are you kidding? If that person's intimate with somebody else, that's it, I can't be married to that person. So really very strong opinions happen. So as I write these questions out and I see the responses, it gets people to think about other things that they haven't spoken about. What about secrets? What secrets do you have? Uh, or have you had a relationship with the same sex person that you never revealed? I mean, we're talking about major issues here that when they are explored, sometimes it does make you think, do you want to stay in this marriage or not? It's not that I'm promoting marriage at all costs, but I am promoting staying married, lowering those statistics that are unnecessary and really being able to enjoy your life together. Because if you trade off, you're going to meet somebody else, I guarantee you, uh, with this issue. It's just a click away on the internet. You get somebody else, and that's the trouble today. Uh, marriage is not what it used to be if you do get married, because living together is so convenient, and then leaving each other is much more convenient than breaking this marriage license. So this is what this is all about, getting people to think, are they really a fit for each other? It's not that there shouldn't be marriage in the picture, but who are you going to be married with? Is this person your soulmate? Is this person somebody that you can trust and that you can really tell everything to? And another thing that's going on today, the roles have shifted. Women are not staying home and men working. Women want to go out there and have careers. They want to be educated. What's going to happen if you have children? Is one of you going to stay home? Are you going to move for the other partner if that partner needs to move for success in their career? Those things do come up. And what is more important? Is it family? Is it your relationship? Is it your career? You better know. A lot of people don't know what's more important. They better know these things because when it happens, there's such a void and they forget what, what that contract was all about. And so they start arguing and bickering over other things. So it's very important to go back and look at that contract and say, oh yes, that's why I married him. That's why I wanted this. When I, before I got married, I said, you need to be supportive of my parents. It was very important to me. That was, a, and I knew that to me, that would be a deal breaker. So he was on board with that because he knew it was very important. So when you have a void, it's not necessarily what's going on at the moment. You're in a state of discomfort and feeling that there's something missing. Go back to that contract, which is an official contract and see, are you fulfilling all the things that you spoke about? Because most likely life takes over, errands, children, responsibilities, whatever that is. And then it's not the two of you anymore. And you have to go back to the two of you 
mm-hmm. who comes first. And when it's the two of you, if you have a strong union, then you're good parents. Then you're good to your, your own parents because you have what it takes. So all these things are really vital to continue to have marriages that really work. And we have to keep going. And I plan, hopefully, we're going to try to have a show to present different couples uh, and different uh, arenas and sets of views, career-oriented, not career-oriented, career different gender if, if needed, uh, sexual orientations if we're going to have that, mm-hmm. and then come together and judge each other as a group and see what they think makes a good marriage and what doesn't make a good marriage. When I got married, what I thought was a good marriage is for my partner to agree with everything I said. But that didn't last too long. (laughs) And I was not too happy. You know, I thought he was going to fulfill everything that was missing in my life. And he had his own agenda. So the problem is that these people often have these voids because these deficits come from their family of origin. Mm. And then they get married and they say, ah, this person's going to understand my problem. Well, we often marry our parents. We try to fix what we didn't get before. So we marry people who are similar. Maybe they have dysfunctions, but there's a comfort level with the similarity of these of the other person. And so we go with that and then we let it all out on that person. And then there's problems because nobody can fix what you didn't have uh, beforehand. So you really have to start fresh and you have to be able to say, what can I do for my partner? What is it that he or she wants to make them happy? Because that's the best kind of relationship. When you're happy because your partner is happy, then you have it all together. Because what happens, they want to reciprocate. And then you're there for each other rather than looking and at the worst situations when I have couples and they're already looking to criticize, no matter what the other person does, they're going to find fault. Then I know it's already a goner. But when you have, you see the, the difference, but when you want that person to be able to get all their needs met, that person will do the same thing uh, for you back and forth. I mean, I put my husband through law school. He helped me with my PhD and was back and forth, back and forth, taking turns always. So remember uh, that it's not just about me, it's about both of us. It's the extension, when you marry somebody, you're marrying their family, you're marrying your in-laws. How often do you want to see them? Believe it or not, that's pretty scary. You better find that history of that person because you're, you're in trouble. And not only that, when you argue, you find fault with the in-laws. To me, that's the biggest pain. My husband will say things about my parents and he'll really know how to do that to me, get yeah. into that, mm-hmm. grind me with that. And uh, so you better know, what are they like? Are they divorced? Uh, is there alcoholism? Is there drug addiction? Uh, do they have anger issues? All these things, study them closely because you're gonna be living with them in many ways. You're gonna see, be seeing them a lot holidays be careful watch out and you'll be living with the role model that they put set up as well so the wonderful years in the beginning where this person can do no wrong wow he's the best or she's the best watch out because it hasn't come yet it's gonna come you know dr frida sitting here listening to you say those exact words i'm like okay she's in my life right now all right this is exactly everything that just happened and I'm going to be transparent, okay? I'm going to be quick, but I'm going to be very transparent. My wife and I got married five years ago. Uh, my wife was already living in Los Angeles. I was living here in Chicago. Um, when we decided to get married, um, it was no, man, it was a no brainer. You know, I was leaving. I was going to where she was. I didn't want to be here. Anymore. I wanted to be somewhere else. Got married moved to LA and everything was, you know, fine and great. COVID happened. And, um, you know, for a lot of people, COVID was a game changer. For us, it was a game changer, but in a positive, you know, because I will admit, you know, 
as you talk about, you know, like really starting to get to know someone and that romance period or what have you, after that fades away, yeah, you're, man, look here, I'm looking at you, you're looking at me, we're like two owls looking at each other, trying to figure each other out, like, okay, what do you do, what do you do, what do you do, okay, man, do you swoop down or do you go high, you know, or what, you know, like what, but there was a tragic moment where her family member passed away. I'm so sorry to hear that. Or they were in, they were in the beginning stages of passing away from COVID. Um, we had to make a decision to either stay in LA or leave LA to come back to Chicago. Now, mind you, I just left Chicago, okay? In my mind, I was gone. Like, I wasn't coming back here, all right? And it was a moment where we had our talk and part of me, as you talked about ego and things like that before, oh man, part of me was like, hey, you know what? <sighs> you know, you live and you learn, you love once, you may love again, you know? The other part of me was, no, you know, man, this is your wife, this is a union, you, st you stood in front of these people, you made these vows, you know, how can you go back on what you said you would do, you know, at least try. And it was a struggle. It was like, it, it was a personal internal struggle with me, you know, and we decided to move back to Chicago. Funny enough, you're talking about in-laws, we moved into her parents' house. Not good. Okay. Just like the whole family concept and everything you're talking about. And, you know, she comes from a family-oriented type of atmosphere. I don't come from a family-oriented type of atmosphere. So those things we had to, like, work through at first because there will be gatherings where they will all be sitting around and talking. I will be away, you know, that's because that just wasn't my thing, you know. My thing is... If the conversation is about something that I can relate to, then fine, I'll have a conversation. But I'm not one to sit around and just listen to random conversation because for me personally, that 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 just doesn't, you know, that just doesn't do it for me. So listening to you say these things and I wish we would have had an emotional prenup <laughs> beforehand. You know, but these are things that we worked out on our own on the fly because I attribute it to having the mindset of not quitting. Okay. Yes, this is going to be rough. Yes, it's going to be a bumpy ride, you know, but if you stay in it long enough, you'll get to see what's on the other side, you know, and what's on the other side can be great than what you have right now. Absolutely. A hundred percent. You know, when you go to the depth of problems, that brings you closer, if anything. It, it gives you a feeling of what that other person is going through and what uh, the other person is all about. So with you, it was a trial period. Mm -hmm. But really, uh, you came out stronger. I could see that in this marriage. And uh, marriage, I mean, I've been married so long that I'm really like attached to this guy already. You know? <laughs> like he, he better be around because I need him now. Before yeah. it was okay, but now you know I'm so used to it. It's like my security blanket. So it's really gotten very very close. So it, it's really very different. But to remember one thing about a relationship that's very important. It's about two people coming together, not two people becoming one. Now in the 50s, it was more like that. People were intertwined with each other, very codependent. The man worked, the woman needed to stay home uh, with the kids. Today, uh, it's not the same. So it's good to be connected, but it's good to be physically independent of each other because it makes the relationship so much more interesting uh, when you have things to share rather than you're waiting for one person to give you t that excitement in your life because that's too much responsibility. So that's something very, very important to be independent, to have your own autonomy. And, you know, and my research even showed that women who did have careers 
um, we're respected more, I hate to say this in the home, and we're listened to financially, socially, you name it. So it trickles down uh, the way you're treated even outside the home. Different types of professions for men bring different types of personalities into the home. You you are probably a wonderful husband, because first of all, you're listening to me, which is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and you're being supported of supportive of me so I really that's so nice I appreciate that you're a good you're a kind guy but you know not you know businessmen are horrible when I was working uh, in a law firm in the beginning these guys were horrible to women uh, the way they spoke about them uh, if a woman came in it didn't look so great they called them names behind their backs they called them a pig I was outraged at their behavior so yes even not only the in-laws but what kind of profession does this person have a professional man is more equal-minded because they work with other women who do the same thing so they come home and they have that kind of um you know relationship that they've had all day long uh where businessmen often you know i hate to say this people in hedge funds and all these guys with the big mm -hmm. money you know, women, there are very few women in that field. They, they're gophers for the coffee and whatever. And they come home and they expect that kind of treatment. So also watch out for what kind of profession. That gives me a lot of information when I hear who that person is, what those per that person's needs are from a relationship. Does that person want someone to be there for them? And so they can make the choices they want to? Watch out. It's not a compliment for women when men control them and when men are jealous they think oh they really care about me no they want to manipulate you so be careful about that too so all these things this emotional uh, prenup are happening without you realizing that it's going to build up into something that's eventually going to be extremely explosive and then they go to therapy and they expect the therapist to help them you know and the therapist is already in a different place they're already looking at each, at each other, getting to talk differently. So with that, they're already looking to see, as I said before, who's right or wrong. And when they're in that place, they want to be right. So it's not necessarily about saving the marriage. It's about they'd rather be right. And then they, they start arguing. And when they come in and tell me how much money they want, and somebody spends months looking at the fine lines of how much money they're going to get, it's so crass, it's so out of league to what they were supposed to do for each other and how they were supposed to represent each other and who are they really and what is marriage really all about? Is it a business? Is it something where you're supposed to come out and gain from this situation? You know, there are people that will not get married if they don't have a prenup. They wanna know what's in it for them. I really think that that itself sets up a, a place in your mind about divorce oh well if this does, if this doesn't work i'll just get a divorce there's no such thing as coming out ahead if you get a divorce you leave with baggage that you're bringing more baggage and adding more baggage to this other relationship second marriages have less of an outcome even than the first marriages hmm. so we, we have, to, yes, you said 40, I said 50% of all marriages. Mm -hmm. You said what, 49, the first marriage? 41% of first time marriages in a divorce. Okay, 50% of second time marriages. It gets harder. And then sometimes you wonder, could I have worked it out? So it's work, it is work, but you have to know uh, that it's worth working out with the person that you're with, which means spending time giving that person part of yourself, having date night is very important to be able to talk things out. What about going away once a month on a weekend, go away somewhere local, go to a local motel and just the two of you get a babysitter if you have to. Mm -hmm. Rekindle the sparks that you had before. Why did you get together in the first place? Remember those things, we forget those things and then things start slipping and sliding. And we get angry about who knows when the next day we look at broken dishes and we wonder what what happened we don't even remember why we fought that's that's really the truth so all these things come into play 
as you know what's important and the other person can bring in things from the day that has nothing to do with you. Do you listen to their problems? Are you compassionate? Do you support their needs? That's part of a relationship, companionship. That's a major part. Somebody that's going to help you with your own frustrations. It could be the least significant thing, but if something bothers you, then the other person should feel that they can pick up the pieces and vice versa. It goes around in a circle. You have to be able to keep giving so you can keep getting. And the other person wants to give to you because you're giving to them. That's how it keeps going round and round. And another part about marriage that's very important is that you grow together. Uh, it's more colorful when you keep changing and growing. If you stay stagnant, that's very dangerous because being stagnant is boring. Uh, you are you're you're outgrowing uh, the situation, and you're not sharing it with somebody that's closest to you. So what happens is you find somebody else that you feel has evolved on the same level as you. So I'm saying to you, bring your partner with you. If you're growing and you see things, let them be part of that, rather than looking for somebody else that understands you and that can talk to you, because that's dangerous. When someone's listening to you of the opposite sex and understands you, you say, hey, wait a minute, this person knows me better than my spouse knows me. What am I doing with my spouse? And then what happens is you fall into this trap. Talking becomes more than just a friendship. And that's where this, this these office romances watch out. <laughs> well, no. So to your point, that is, I see it. Well, okay. So funny thing, when my wife and I first got married, I worked in education. She worked in healthcare. Okay. Oh. So by so years so now in year five, coming up on year five, it's the other way around. She works in oh. education and I work in healthcare now, you know. And mm -hmm. um you well, she works in higher education, uh, and I work for healthcare insurance. Um, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. So I'll come. And um, it's funny, you know, when you talk about that, you know, like our co-workers are people that we're around all the time. Yeah. The male, female, whatever, opposite sex, whatever, they're around us all the time. They know certain things about us that our spouses just may not know because they spend a large part of the day with us. And we're all going through these like, transitions at the same time whether they're high whether they're low whether they're just like stagnant as you say we're all going through them at the same time so we all sort of have a common bond but as you said sometimes talking to your co-workers or putting trust extra trust into them may spark something much more than what should be a office friendship or you know just us being co-workers now you're taking now my emotions and everything else is taking me somewhere else that i'm not getting over here for whatever reason whether i'm not communicating it or whether they're not communicating it or what have you it's just not being communicated on this side so now it's like oh okay well why would i want to be bothered with this person when hey this person over here understands me but little do we know that's just a fraction of time that you know this person that you work with because believe it or not when you all get off work they go home to their spouse or whomever and they have their own lives so that's one thing we all have to get into you know our heads here absolutely, like, absolutely. Yeah, go ahead absolutely you know i just want to ask you know real quick what happens if a emotional prenup is broken Okay, but to, just to connect to what you're saying, uh, this person that you see in the office, just to tell all the other people that are even thinking about being involved with somebody else, you know, they're not involved with your errands. Uh, they look great. Things are calm there. Uh, they're not involved with your financial problems. There's no, no negativity. Uh, then you come home and your spouse is tired and doesn't want to talk and is grumpy. You say, who needs this when I have... 
You can have this attractive, wonderful, high energy person and have fun, but you're not living the life with that person. And so it's tempting, but it's not realistic. Now, the second, the question you asked me about, what did you say? What about the yes, if like, if a, you know, if like one part of, of a emotional prenup is broken, how can we come back from it? Well, you have to go back. It's a license. It's a marital license. It's part of the license. It's official. It's um, supported by an attorney, uh, and it's somebody who is accountable for your decision making. Uh, and if the conflict doesn't, uh, I mean, if the contract, the prenup doesn't work, you know, you may have to break the whole uh, relationship if you're not willing to work on it. So it's very serious. So if that one person does not abide by that contract, well, consequences will be in order. It's not that you can get away with it and it's between you and the four walls and no one's going to know about it. And that person has no choice and they'll just stay with you because they need you for whatever reason. No, these things are very important to the other person. So important that they're willing to break the marriage. So you better watch out. Something insignificant. I feel like I'm lecturing. I'm blaming you, but I'm not blaming you. <laughs> it's all your fault, but something... <laughs> But something that could be insignificant to somebody, you know, like, don't look when I'm walking with you. Don't look at those women. It bothers me. Uh, but it's hard not to look the way they're dressed or, you know, half dressed or whatever. Even other people look at them. But it bothers your partner. You don't do it. And guess what? If that's on the contract, that they don't want you to do that, that every time they go out socially, they're uncomfortable that they can't look forward to it, and that they feel that they're gonna to have to pay a price every time they go out. That's the quality of their life. So something very insignificant to one person can mean a lot every time they go out with you, that they don't feel that they're center stage. They feel that you're distracted, uh, that you don't feel that they are, uh, have enough to offer. Those kind of things do break a marriage, by the way. But with a contract, you can prevent that because you say, oops, I slipped. Let's work on this. Let's do something about it. So you have opportunities to fix it. Later on, if you go to therapy, it's already in a place where there's such resentment built up that it's hard to break a lifestyle of a certain uh, type of uh, comfort level already. Um, it's, it's become something that has been conditioned and people continue that. And to take that away, it's like slipping the rug under them. You know, they're already standing in place and this is what they want. So sometimes people have secondary gains. They like to put somebody, their partner down a little bit. Maybe their partner's too happy. I have somebody that comes in and says to me, how come every time I'm happy, my partner needs to push me down a little bit because if a person isn't confident about themselves, they don't want their partner to feel too confident. They feel threatened. So that's another thing to think about. Are you the rest of your life going to be squashed so that other person won't be threatened by you? Are you going to have to give up who you are, the essence of who you are to make someone comfortable? Guess what? The answer is no, it's not worth it. So a lot of people think, Wait a minute, is that enough to get a divorce? Yes, because who you are is being broken down. And the rest of your life, it's not just one incident. This is all repetition. It's going to continue over and over and over that you can't really shine. You can't really be opposite, uh, uh, optimistic. Because some people have personalities that are really out there. Yeah. And some people have to be down. Well, they're uncomfortable with a person that's really out there. So what's more important to be with that person, to stay married? Every marriage does not need an applause because it doesn't mean that it's a good marriage. Oh, you've been married 30 years. Yay. Not really. What have you been enduring 30? How about you got a divorce? Yay. Because you're not putting up with any garbage. So it's not necessarily the fact that you're enduring, that you're a good person. No. You're, you're a person who has certain needs and you're not going to give up who you are, the essence of your individuality for someone else. So there's a fine line between staying together 
and not being together. And that's what that contract is all about. Are you able to stay soulmates? Is that person who you thought you were, he was? Maybe they have changed. And so you keep going back to keep that person back in place. No, wait a minute, this is what I want to get back there. If you change, things are going to change in this marriage. And that's what we need to do to prevent divorce. Dr. Freedom, let me just tell you right now. Don't get a divorce. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not tomorrow. Not after you say, you say, you know, that lady convinced me these things are not the same. I'm out of here. That's it. Goodbye. Well, Don't no, no. I mean, as I opened with, you know, I pride myself on informational content. And as I said, if not for the viewer listening, maybe they have someone in their life or around them that may need to hear these words, okay? So just sitting here and listening to you say what you say, like you are really hitting home on a lot of points that I'm not just talking about myself, others, you know, men and women just don't take the time to see, you know? But I just wanna say this because we're running short on time. Dr. Frida, I, look, First and foremost, if people want to get in contact with you, if they want your services, if they want to know anything that's happening with you, how can they do so via internet or social media? First of all, it's a pleasure speaking to you because you're somebody who listens and who does take everything in, but you've been, you're a married man. So single women, I'm telling them he's out of business, forget about it. Yeah, but awesome. you're, you have a lot to offer and good looking too. But uh, aside from that, Aside from that, it's uh, Dr. Frida, D R F R I E D A dot com. That's my website. Uh, if they want to contact me for any reason, it's D O C T O R F R I E D A at gmail dot com. If they want to contact me uh, personally, uh, and there's a lot that you can prepare for before the marriage to make the marriage work. You just have to know what to look for. A lot of people do not know what to look for and then it hits them and they don't, it's so unexpected. So you have to know what, what areas to look for. And I've been here for in 30 years in this business. I know, I know what can trigger people off. And when you have that, you have the essence of what is important. Marriage is important because it's a license of support, a support system. Mm -hmm. There are certain agreements that you know that you can count on. So it gives you a reason to want to work harder at it rather than just living together. Living together, people will live together four years at the most, then they'll split up to the next one. A marriage is a commitment and they really feel they should work on it. This prenup is the same thing. It's a commitment to work on it so you can make it work. And hopefully with our conversation, will hit upon people where we can save their marriages. And that's really what we're, uh, really the main objective is to save marriages before there are problems. Well, look, as I said before, Dr. Frida, thank you for coming onto this platform and blessing us with oh, the gospel, as I like to call it, but you have really hit home on some points. And I just want to say, ladies and gentlemen, this won't be the last time Dr. Frida will be on this show because I, I be definitely back because want to have her back. Because there's yeah, we have a wonderful chemistry together. Oh, we have uh, a there's so much there. more that we need to yes. talk about. I can tell a you lot, that. Lot. Oh, oh, there's oh. a lot. Okay. You said it. Looking forward to it. Well, oh, that, no, no, that, no, ladies and gentlemen. This has been World with Ty Brownlow. I've been your host, Ty Brownlow. Remember, no one is worthless, no story is worthless. You can follow me, all social media platforms. Work with Ty Brownlow, or you can go to my website, tybrownlow.com. Get this wonderful conversation, ladies and gentlemen, plus other great conversations as well. Dr. Frida, I thank you immensely, immensely. My blessings to you, but you're doing so well, you don't need my blessings. Oh, Just keep I'll going. I it's bet. true. All right. It's true. Thank you. Peace. The best. Thank you so much.